Hi guys, this is Richard from Foresight Productions. Uh, you may know me from bands around town, Donald Break, and any number of retarded projects, or you may simply know me as the guy who hangs out with Daryl. I hear he's pretty famous. Uh, first and foremost, I need to shave, but that's besides the point. I am uh, trying to do a series talking about pawn shop gear, gear acquisition from used sources, things that... Uh, you know, I've always had to go to, growing up as a poor musician, I've always found alternative routes to try to find the gear I wanted, and, uh, or at least kind of come close to what I wanted. I've uh, always found different ways to make it possible to get a certain guitar I was after by, say, going through three or four other guitars, buying and selling, buying and selling. And through this I learned to rebuild guitars, refinish guitars, repaint them, fix amps, all that kind of stuff. So what's going on today? Well, this beauty right here is my latest pawn shop acquisition. Uh, it came from Carson's Pawn on Pace Boulevard. Uh, great little shop. They always have some uh, interesting things in the back. Like most pawn shops, they get a lot of crap, but they have a guitar tech there, so he kind of knows some, uh, he knows kind of what he's looking for. Uh, this is an Ibanez SC 520QM, an emerald burst. It's the <coughs> rarest of the finishes as far as I have been able to find by research. The blue one's pretty, but for some reason I'm kind of more partial to this color myself. Uh, this guitar is one that I bought to resell to uh, make my way to getting a multi-scale seven string and that's kind of what the end game is with this series so it may take me four or five more guitars to go through but I'll make a video for each one I'm also using to test some stuff out today this Marshall Blues Breaker pedal I'll do a quick rundown on it but there's a million different uh, videos about it so I'm not going to do much with that and then uh, the amp I'm playing through is my PV Backstage 110 just an old crappy amp the old speaker was lame so I threw it out and I put in an Eminence Delta Demon. It's a little darker and heavier, but it's also 100 watts, and I can literally play with this little tiny practice amp with a drummer and, and be almost at venue volume. The thing is ridiculous how much power that can handle. This is just my old PV Backstage 10, Backstage 110 right here. It's just got everything you'd expect. Your volume, a little bright switch, high and low gain. Uh, all that normal stuff you get in your old amps. I like these old PV amps, they can take a beating and last forever. Uh, interesting thing about this one though, is inside you get a Patriot Delta Demon right there. And <clears throat> just an awesome, awesome speaker. A little thin inch, but it's super powerful. This right here is just something I've wired up so that I can unhook the speaker and use this as an extension because it's got no extension speaker out, it's just got headphone and remote switch. But this way I can push a cab with it. I used to use a 1x12 extension cab. I'd play through this thing too. But just a good ass old PV made in USA right there. Radium Mississippi amplifier. Um, you know, just kicks ass now. Loud as hell. Let's talk about the guitar. <coughs> the QM stands for Quilted Maple, which is what this beautiful finish is. It comes from uh, the west coast of the United States is where the world gets their majority of Quilted Maple from. And the quilting is actually a result of the weight of these old growth maple trees, the grain getting compressed, pressed down, and kind of folding over on itself, and you're left with just this beautiful cut of wood. Gorgeous. And uh, I have over here an Ibanez SZ720, which is kind of the big, bigger brother in this series, uh, but it's been upgraded with EMGs 81 and 85, and it's got a flame maple top, which comes from Canada or west coast of the US. <clears throat> try to impart some knowledge as much as I can to help anybody out who's a guitar player or just wants to learn more about this kind of stuff because it's cool. This guitar's got two humbuckers. They're Ibanez uh, humbuckers, but they're Duncan designed. The, they sound pretty good. They got a warm, warm tone without having too much of that harsh kind of bite you get out of crappy, cheaper pickups. And I think that's because Ibanez kind of wanted this series back when it came out to be a uh, kind of a more higher end but an affordable way to get into a more higher end guitar in the market. So here's some uh, clean tones. Thank you. 
Here by the neck, we got our neck pickup, which has its own separate volume pot. Kind of what you'd expect, uh, more bell like. guitar a good warm tone to it now I'll run it through the blues breaker here unless you hear how that sounds and uh, I'm only going to use the kind of higher gain side it's also kind of a boost pedal but uh, being the only guitar player in my band I don't use a lot of boost I just kind of play the solo and the volume is loud enough as it is because I'm playing with a bass player so my bass player is monstrously loud so maybe we'll go over his rig in one of these videos so you can check that out Okay, so really quick, this is the Blues Breaker 2. That's the pedal I got from this guy. Nice solid build. I like that. It's all steel. This right here I like is the uh, battery compartment. In a pinch, if you don't have a, a screwdriver, it's just a flathead, you can use a guitar pick or a uh, penny or something that works just fine. Change your battery out. Uh, switch feels good. Normal click switch works great. This right here, you've got your boost or your blues and the blues is the drive so you turn up that drive and you get more of that gain I pretty much had it all the way up uh, tone adjustment just to adjust your high end and then of course volume to keep things in line with your other pedals or maybe give you a little bit more boost when you hit your hardcore courses or what have you uh, standard 9 volt wall warp plug worse than any pedal pedal board uh, it's a pretty nice little pedal. I really like the build quality, just uh, not really my sound. This particular pedal was uh, acquired because I was selling some drum stuff, actually. And a guy <clears throat> came all the way from Definiac Springs, about two hours away-ish, maybe a little less. And he was looking for just a drum, electronic drum head to use to sample a kick drum. And he was doing that so that when he played live, his crappy kick drum would sound like a decent one. And, you know, fair enough. So he came and he, he was going to buy it for my asking price. And he said, hey, I got this pedal. Would you take some off the off the price if I gave you the pedal? So I said, sure, let me check it out. And uh, I checked it out. It was all right. This is actually the first time I've ever played through it. So I didn't even know it worked until right now. It's kind of how you do in the Craigslist game. But, uh... Sounds pretty good. Uh, I like it. It's good for that kind of older, older style, classic heavy playing. Maybe like maybe a doom band would enjoy it. I could see somebody doing this all day. Again, not really my cup of tea, but it's got a decent tone. Um, 
I could definitely do some recording with it just for fun, but uh, probably going to sell it too. But the main focus in the series is to kind of let everybody know that, you know, if there's a guitar you really want to get or there's some instrument you can't afford, something you're really looking to get, you can always wheel and deal your way to it if you just gain some knowledge first and you know what you're doing. Um, this guitar, part of what makes it so valuable is the neck through, which is awesome. Just a real nice smooth heel, uh, better for sustain, better for uh, just a solid tone. And the same thing with the string through body right here, which you can see. The strings go straight through the body, right there. So that's good for helping a solid, sustaining tone as well. Uh, were I to keep it, which I really want to, um, <clears throat> I would probably, I'd probably either throw some uh, EMGs like I have on my 720, or maybe save up and go for Rook and put some bare knuckles in here. Uh, but. It's it's gorgeous. It's hard for me to just. I don't want to put it down, but I actually have a guy coming out to purchase it for me, from me, and uh, the money from that is going to go to purchase another guitar, which will be in my next video, and then so on until I hopefully get the guitar I want to get. The neck on this guitar, a little bit thicker than the Ibanez shredding necks we're used to, a little bit thicker than a Wizard II, um, but it's a nice, comfortable feel to the point that even when I'm playing up here, if I'm doing a lot of fast-paced stuff. It's got this nice little bump here, which I, I found myself hooking my thumb on to play some of the stuff up here, and it's the same with my Ibanez 720 right there. Uh, she has a coil tap, too. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But, um, yeah, if there's any any questions you guys have or anything you want to, uh, to ask me, I, I've been doing this for a long time. I know a lot about guitars. It's, it's been my passion to play music for most of my life. And <clears throat> if I can help you out with anything, if you need help learning how to take care of your guitar or set it up or where to go to find gear, you know, we're gonna have a, I'm gonna have a whole video devoted on where to look for gear, where the buddy musician can find good places to do that. And uh, just, just hit me up or if you're interested in a Marshall Bluesbreaker pedal, you know. Shoot me a price. You might get it. <laughs> uh, that's all I got to really say for right now. I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, you know, look for more videos in the future. Yeah.